Hello, Thomas with Emit here with an overview tutorial of the EIM. The EIM is a touchscreen display that connects to our various engine control products. When you first turn on or wake up the EIM, the screen will be the EIM home screen, which looks like this. On older versions, it might look more like this, but the general idea is the same. The EIM home screen shows any modules that are connected, in this case, the AFRC and ignition. It shows a few buttons on the side and some buttons and text on the top and bottom. The top and bottom, or header and footer, are always the same regardless of what page you're on. So for instance, if I was to select notes, we go to the note page, but you'll see that the header and footer are still there. So I'm going to go over what those are. The home button always goes to the home screen of the current section. Since I'm in the global EIM section, if I click home, it will go to this, the EIM home screen. If I go to AFRC, and then some AFRC screen, such as its sensors, I hit home, go to the AFRC home screen. System menu in the bottom left always goes to the EIM home screen. The access button changes the access level for the system. When you first turn on or wake up the EIM, the access level will be at operator. At operator access, you can view most items, but you cannot change any settings. This prevents accidentally changing settings when you don't want to, and also preventing people you don't want to change the settings from knowing the password. The next access level above operator is setup. The password should come with the EIM unit when you uh, first receive it. I'm going to enter the access code and hit submit. After I hit submit, the access level went to setup. In setup, you can change most normal settings. The highest access level is engineering. So at this point, I'm now in engineering. To go back to operator, you can also just hit submit with the access password blank. The timers button shows global timers. A timer can be added if you're in setup or higher for any need you choose. And the timers can count up or down on real hours or runtime hours. These are both count up timers on runtime. So for instance, I could be counting up how many hours have elapsed since the engine was overhauled. When it's overhauled again in the timer screen, I could reset it. The alarms page shows any active alarms. Right now, there are no active alarms. If there was an alarm, I could hit view and it would bring up a screen that shows that alarm event. The alarm history shows past alarms. I can hit view to view that past alarm event. The date and time is in the lower right corner. If you're in setup or higher, you can change the date or time. The back button goes to the previous screen. The page number is simply a separate number for every page. It might be used um, when troubleshooting the system. The text here shows the current section of the system. And this text shows if the engine is running or off. On the home screen, it will show a button for every module that is attached and detected. If a module does not show up, verify that it's wired properly, that the CAN termination switches are in the correct direction as listed in the installation guide, and that it's properly powered on and the light is showing green. Once it shows up, you can select it and go to the home screen for that system. This is the AFRC home screen. And this is the ignition home screen. 
Each module will have many screens associated with it. For instance, the ignition on setup and testing will show all of these screens. But they're all still underneath the ignition section, so I can click home to go to the ignition home. Many pages have a help box that you can click to read help for that page to see some additional information. Also on the system home screen is the notes page where you can add a note for any reason. The engine info page where you can change the AFRC main setup, see the engine hours and start amount, and the make and serial number of the engine. This button will show the B timer if there's no emit enunciator. This button will show up if the ignition or enunciator is attached to shut down the engine through the EIM. The data logging button will go to the sensor data logging page where you can choose a sensor item and graph it. And the system settings slash utilities button will go to a back page with some additional buttons to other pages that change settings and do other things that aren't used as often. When in a higher access level, you'll be able to see more buttons. And that is the EIM overview.